Okay, segment we will be looking at the last of the confidence intervals. In this case, we're going to be looking at the confidence interval for the population standard deviation. The lifetimes of AAA batteries are approximately normally distributed. Now, a manufacturer wants to estimate the standard deviation Here's our key text of the lifetime of AAA batteries that it produces. Now, a random sample of 23 AAA batteries produced by this manufacturer lasted with a mean of 10.9 hours with a standard deviation of 2.4 hours. Find a 95% confidence interval for the population standard deviation of the lifetimes of AAA batteries produced by the manufacturer and then complete the table below. Let's go over and take a look at our notes as usual for this particular type of confidence interval. Now remember here that what we're trying to do is to use a sample once again that we hope is representative of this entire population to produce or to predict the population standard deviation sigma. Now the inputs to this formula that we're going to be using down in here, notice Rn, the sample size, and S, the sample standard deviation. And so then, of course, since we're dealing with a population standard deviation sigma, we're going to be dealing in a chi-square uh, type of distribution. So that's all going to come up here as we get into it. Let's go back and uh, read the formula once again, or read the problem once again here and see what we've got. Uh, notice here that we have a random sample of 23 AAA batteries. So that tells us that we are dealing with a sample size a sample size of 23. So our sample size n is 23. And furthermore, we can notice here that uh, we have a random sample of 23 uh, batteries produced by this manufacturer, a mean of 10.9, so that's our X bar, a standard deviation of 2.4, there's our S. Now notice that in the, uh, the problem that we're doing, it tells us the mean of 10.9, but we don't care because that doesn't come up anywhere in the formula. But the 2.4, the S value, does. So we need to put that 2.4 as S, our sample standard deviation. And so we have basically everything we need, except we need the confidence level. So let's go back and look for that. We have a 95% confidence interval for the population standard deviation. So right away then, and let's go back to our notes here and see that with our 95% confidence, as we have done many times before, we're going to take that 95% confidence. And of course, this is the chi-square distribution because we're dealing with the uh, population standard deviation. So in the chi-square distribution, you may recall here that all values are positive. There are no negative chi-squares. The uh, distribution itself is kind of lopsided. It is not symmetric at all. But still, the area under the curve is 1, and we proceed much the same way as we do on everything else. With a confidence of 95%, we will carve that 95 or 0.95 right out of the center. Keep in mind then that 1 minus 0.95 is 0.05. We're going to have some of that area on each side here. And so 0.05 divided by 2 is 0.025. And so the 0.025 area here is this area under the curve to the right of our unknown chi-square value. And typically, um, sometimes we call this chi-squared right. And you can see here then that this chi-square right value is just simply going to be the chi-square of our 0.025. So that part's easy to do, okay? We're also going to need a chi-square left value. And since we have this uh, area over here on this side of 0.025, and if you remember that the chi-square button likes the area to the right of that in order to work, what we're going to have there is the chi-square of 0.025. 975, which is going to be 1 minus 0.025. So the 
area to the right of this value, the 0.025 is 0.975, and so that's going to give us what we need. So these chi-square left and chi-square right values, we can get those from our Alex calculator. So let's hop over and do that. Notice here that uh, we're going to be working with the chi-squared button. Chi-squared likes the area to the right, so we said we have 0 0.025. Also, remember chi-squared is a degree of freedom uh, function here uh, with sample size minus 1, as we did before. So we'll have a degree of freedom here of 22, and we'll go ahead and calculate that value. We see that our chi-squared right is going to be 30. 6.780 and the next digit is 7 so 36.781 is going to be our chi-square on the right hand side so let's go over and take a quick look at that keep in mind here we need the chi-square of uh, 0.975 as well, so I'm back to Alex calculator. A quick way to do that is just click undo and then just go in here and change just this number. So 0.975. Notice I got two decimal points here. Let's get rid of one of those and calculate. That's going to give us 10.982. And so that is our chi-squared left value, rounded to three places. So let's go over here and uh, make a note of that. So here's our two chi-square values that we're going to need. The chi-square right value, notice, goes over here in our massive formula. And notice this time, too, that we don't have an error calculation. When we go to the uh, calculation part of this, we simply go right to the end of the interval. There is no in-between step. We can just go directly to this here. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to uh, calculate our uh, low end of our interval first. Notice to do that we're going to have a great big old square root. So we'll go over here to Alex and uh, notice if we're careful, let's keep this number. This is our chi-squared uh, on the um, left side. So let's go ahead and store that. Let's clear that. Let's make a big square root. In our square root, remember the first thing that we are going to have over there is n minus 1. And we said here that our sample size was 23. So 23 minus 1 is 22. We're going to multiply that times our s value. Let's look back at our formula. We see that that s value has to be squared. So as we come back over here, we can see that our uh, standard deviation is 2.4, and that has to be squared. So let's hit the squared key, get that up. We're going to highlight that, divide all of that by our chi-squared left, which we've cleverly put into storage. So if we simply recall that, this is going to give us the um, actually the high end of the interval first. So let's calculate. Let's round this to at least two decimal places. So 3.40, and that's going to be the high end first. 3.40. Okay. While we're in there, might as well undo this, and we don't have to retype anything. This value here of chi-square, we did write that down a while ago. Let's go back to our notes here. Remember that that value um, was going to be 36.781. So we could simply reproduce that. Or, I suppose if we were really lazy, what we could do is we could simply go over here and just recalculate it. So we could simply go in here and uh, recalculate and just calculate it at the same time. Wouldn't have to retype it. I'm not sure which is easier. Either way, will work. And so we get 1.856 to two decimal places, 1.86. 
And so, there we go. This is going to be the uh, confidence interval for the population standard deviation. And Alex is happy.